Good afternoon, this is DK from Mr. V Amps, and this is our almost 2,000 subscriber special. I'm doing it early because I'm lazy. Okay, different topic today. Make this interesting. This is a microphone. From a different manufacturer, this is a microphone. From yet another different manufacturer, this is a microphone. As is this, and is this. And is this, and is this, and is this too. But what's the problem? They're all boring. They all look like ice cream cones. Not cool. Wouldn't it be neat if microphones like had style? They like looked cool? Hmm. Well, that's better. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but kind of cool. Hmm. What about... Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. This is Art Deco period stuff. Like, late 40s, early 50s. How cool is that? This is a Turner 22X microphone. But you know what the problem is? They don't interface well with modern equipment. Even if you get the right cable, you still gotta get transformers and adjust impedances and whatever. And this is an omnidirectional microphone. This is appropriate for talking on a ham radio or yelling orders back to the kitchen like they used to do at McDonald's before they had those computers or making announcements at, from the principal's office in the morning at school right cool mic not appropriate for singing at a modern gig but there is a solution they currently produce microphones in the art deco style that are made to interface to modern equipment and I have a lot of them so let's have a look Okay, modern microphones that have a cool Art Deco style. Starting with the most affordable one I could find. I have purchased all of these with my own money, so this is sort of a non-review review. I will not tell you my opinions because that would make manufacturers happy, and we're not about making manufacturers happy, we're about making me happy. Okay, so this is the Stage Right brand. It is sold through Mono Price, and the current price on Mono Price's website is $59.95, I believe. So $60 US, and I think that includes the shipping too. And this microphone, they refer to it as the Memphis Blue Classic Dynamic Microphone, and it looks like that. It's very blue, it's very chrome, and it's very flippin' heavy. This is actually one of the heaviest ones they have. It is very heavy. This is based on an A-Static model, WR20, I believe was the model. Um, so this is actually uh, modeled after a real vintage mic. We'll see. Let's put up a picture of the uh, WR20 there for everybody. All right. But this is a modern dynamic microphone. Now, a bunch of people like to complain that the mic stand port and the XLR are too close together and you gotta buy a special XLR. You do not have to buy a special XLR. You just need to listen to Kobe. He'll tell you how to do it right. This is the most affordable um, Art Deco style mic that I know about presently. And we're gonna do these in order of most affordable to priciest. There probably are a few mics that I don't own because they were either too expensive for what they were, or I wasn't going to pay imports on them. The next one, although the case is not quite as nice as that monoprice case, which yes, that stage right monoprice case is included, this is actually a decent case in itself. This microphone is from Nady, and it's called a PCM200. It is a dynamic microphone, cardioid pattern, just like the other. And it does feature an on-off switch, just like the Monoprice does. Rather than being chrome, this is actually like a powder coat painted finish on here. It is definitely a metal head. We do not have any plastic microphones here. Um, do not have a microphone that this was directly modeled after, but I believe it was designed to resemble an Electro Voice from back in the day. Go ahead and show a picture of the Electro Voice. Yeah. But uh, we will be giving this mic a listen shortly. Wait a minute. Did I just show this microphone? No, I didn't. What? I didn't. This is also from Nady. It is the PCM100. Notice there's a little LED lamp on the front, and instead of being black foam, it's got this silver 
E colored mesh in there instead. This is a very unique mic because that's not an on-off switch. That's a high cut switch. And this is a condenser microphone. The PCM100 is a condenser. It is actually the only condenser we have here and uh, definitely has its own sound and its own mojo. Does require phantom power to use. Next mic on the roster here is the CAD 77 or A77 based on the actual A static model 77. Uh, CAD these guys, CAD Live CAD, they are formerly a static, which was a major microphone manufacturer. No case, but you get a pretty box and some cool patent drawings and stuff like that. There's some cool artwork that ships with it. But this little puppy is a super cardioid dynamic microphone, which makes it a little different from the others. And the prototype they showed around at the trade shows was actually gold plated. This one is like gold painted powder coated finish um, these the original ones were actually either in the gold finish or in the natural aluminum finish which I don't know maybe I would have preferred the aluminum finish but uh, there you go the 77 a static reissue super cardioid next one coming only in a bag is the ultra famous Sure Model 55. This is the 55SH Series 2 Unidyne with the on-off switch. This is the standard cardioid microphone that they have been making for a very, very long time. I think the last upgrade to this model was in 87. And it is said to have a very similar capsule to the SM58. So very similar sound out of that one. Uh, this one is actually the uh, finish on it is just brushed metal, so it's not chrome. It doesn't really show the fingerprints like uh, some of the other ones may. The Nady and the uh, CAD are the painted ones don't tend to show fingerprints. That chrome monoprice, oh, good grief, are you going to get fingerprints? You think you guys could have given us a case? Heil Sound. Fancy presentation box there. And the cuckoo clock is telling everybody what it thinks of me. This is the Heil Finn. This one comes in white. This type of microphone is available both in the chrome finish, which I have, and also a black finish. And the grill colors can be chosen white, purple, red, or blue are your choices by default. And when you put phantom power to them, they light up. Oh, you guys got to see that, right? We'll have to show you that. But uh, I believe you can also request pink, yellow, or green. That's according to their website. This microphone is modeled after a Turner, just like the Turner we showed earlier, a Turner Model 34X. Turner 34. This is a cardioid dynamic microphone. And... Very Art Deco-y, 1940s styling there. Okay, kids, I made it dark in here so I can turn on the phantom power. Ba-bing! There you go. So, there's your glowing Heil fin. There's the front. And then, like I say, there's two LEDs, one along each side. Um, it, my, the camera makes it look a little bit patchier than it actually is but pretty cool and you can get them in various colors to light up different when you apply phantom power and finally also coming in just a bag is dun, 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 dun. you all know what this is it's the sure super 55 super cardioid microphone the capsule in this is uh, alleged to be very similar to the beta 58 I believe it's a Beta 58A. Uh, no switch on this one. The blue foam might come as a surprise because most of us are used to seeing these in black. The original ones didn't actually have foam, they had cloth. And the cloth might have been red, it might have been blue, it might have been black, it might have been cream. They had a few different ones they would pick. Uh, blue being one of the earliest, so they opted to go with blue for the foam. 
And this is this and the CAD are the two super cardioids. Everything else is a cardioid mic, and that one nady with the silver grill is a condenser. That's those are the different ones. Let's go have a sound check. Another word regarding these retro mics. I find it highly inappropriate that someone would consider putting this on a modern black microphone boom stand. Old school chrome Atlas stands are the way to go. Yes, I said Atlas. And the main reason why is because of how close the... Come on, focus, you stupid camera. Focus. Focus. The jam nut on the top of an Atlas is very small. See that little ring? That allows your XLR to fit. Focus on my hand or something, camera, so we can actually see the XLR. Or not the XLR, the jam nut. And then will it focus? Come on, focus. Please, there we go. So you can see how small the jam nut is on that. With most of these microphones, the XLR and the uh, mic uh, stand threads are very close together. So if you get a modern stand with one of those big wide jam nuts, you're going to have problems. Just for comparison, there's our Atlas jam nut. Here's a modern jam nut. I mean just way wider. Use an Atlas. And if you have a modern chrome stand and you just have one of these big stupid jam nuts, just order yourself an Atlas jam nut. But what if you want a boom stand? Well, period correct boom stands do exist. I actually own one. But may I suggest installing a gooseneck? That's actually more period correct for the time. You can get these in several different lengths. 13 tends to be a little more rigid than 19. So a 7 or 13 inch uh, gooseneck will give you enough room generally for your guitar and your Buddha belly. Okay, this is the sound of the Stage Right Monoprice Memphis Blue microphone recorded from about six inches away. It does take a good deal of gain and we will post the specifications up there on the screen for you. Uh, the manufacturer's website does declare this to be a super cardioid. My mistake, I believe I said it was just a regular cardioid. And we can come into it and talk to it from about two inches away, maybe an inch to two inches away. And you can hear the proximity effect. The equalization on here is dead flat. I would probably want to crank the bottom up and warm it up a little bit and see if I can dial out a little bit of that breath noise. Um, but there you go. The Memphis Blue by Monoprice. This is the sound of the Nady PCM200 dynamic microphone. It is said to be just a standard cardioid pattern. And uh, the specifications that I have for it will be put up on the screen there so you can hear them or hear them. Well, you can probably hear them, but you should be able to read them. And we're about six inches away and we can come right into it uh, about an inch away for some major proximity effect there. This is the Dynamic Nady PCM 200. This is the Nady PCM 100, the condenser microphone. It does require phantom power. And I had to turn the gain down because this one is uh, significantly hotter than the other two. But that can be expected. So this is a performance condenser mic. Uh, again, we're probably about six inches away and we can get right up on it and uh, experience some very close-up vocals for an extra warm tone. All right. Yeah, this uh, mic does have a low-cut filter, which will help with the plosives, and I do not have that turned on at the moment, so you're hearing all of these more or less flat. I would like to EQ a little bit of something to take the nasal out of my voice and give me a little more bass, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. We're listening to microphones. Alright, and this is our CAD mic, the uh, 
a static 77 reproduction the gold mic there this is uh said to be a super cardioid and it's also uh got the neo magnets in it the neodymium magnets i believe that's pronounced uh so it's a little bit higher output for a dynamic microphone higher output we're about six inches away talking into it of course no pop filter so you get all my lovely plosive sounds uh but who plays live with a pop filter on, right? You kind of learned how to manipulate your face and sort of sing into the mic sideways or across, across the mic rather than into the mic. But we're directly into the mic here, and we're going to come right in here, and you can see this super cardioid has a lot of proximity effects, so you can get, you can actually come right to the side of it to avoid major plosives and get really, really hot tone. And now we were on to the Shure 55, the uh, Series 2. Uh, this is a cardioid dynamic microphone. It actually has one of the lowest outputs so far. We have to crank the gain up to get that going. And it really does help to kind of be right up on the mic like this where you're like inches away from it or even giving the thing a kiss to actually get a lot of output out of it. Um, it is said to have a cartridge very similar to the S. SM58, a uh, very similar cartridge, maybe very similar sound. Uh, you're going to need a hot preamp to make this one roll. And this is the Heil Fin, the Heil sound microphone. It is a dynamic cardioid microphone. The phantom power would be applied only to allow it to illuminate. So here we are at six inches away. Uh, you know, modest output there. We'll turn it up a little bit. And if you come in, you can get a proximity effect just like you can with any other cardioid. You can definitely tell from mic to mic that some of these have a warmer profile and some of them have a brighter profile. But uh, that's your Heil sound thin microphone. And finally, we're on to the Shure Super 55. This is the mic that is supposed to sound a lot like the Beta 58A, I believe. Something like that. It is a super cardioid pattern. Here we are about six inches away, something like that. And we can come right up on it and we get some major proximity effect. And there you go. So I hope you had some fun looking at these uh, retro mics with me. Maybe it'll help you influence your decision if you want a mic that doesn't look like an ice cream cone.